Hello everyone, okay, this is our part 3 of our homogeneous linear higher order differential equation with constant coefficient. Okay, this is part 3 and let's continue on. Okay, I hope you guys have learned to our uh, part 1 and part 2. Let's continue on now for our part 3. Okay, so we have learned case 1 and case 2 for our part 3. We're gonna learn about case 3. Okay, so uh, case 3 is imaginary okay? imaginary okay let's first do our usual process in solving for higher order differential equation d cube y convert them to differential operator plus dy plus 2y is equal to 0 y is equal to d cube plus 2 d square plus d plus 2 is equal to 0 Function of d is equal to d cube plus 2 d square plus t plus 2. Okay, I'm just writing that off. Let m be the roots of the equation. Okay, m cube plus 2m plus m plus 2. Okay, m square, right? m square plus 2a plus m plus 2 ha huh. can we can i take out m square m square m plus 2 plus m plus 2 okay all right so this one we kind of get the fruits again all right so if we take out m plus 2 that will become m plus 2 and m square plus 1 okay so we have now our roots. Our root number 1 is m is equal to negative 2. But our second root, m squared plus 1 is equal to 0. m is equal to negative 1 square root. And negative 1 square root is, we take out the negative, that will become i. Okay, or positive or negative i. Now this is now an example of our this is an example of our, you know, imaginary roots. Okay, so first root is positive i, second root is negative i. Okay, okay. So first off, uh, I guess this is not kind of good, kind of good example of imaginary. Let's. I'm gonna check the other one. Okay. So let's say. Right, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just gonna explain it. Right? I'm just gonna explain. It. Right. So, imaginary roots have a formation or a general form. So, an imaginary roots will have m is equal to a plus bi. Okay. M one is equal to a plus bi. M two is equal to a minus bi. Right? There's always two imaginary roots because in order to get imaginary we have to square root a num a negative number, okay? A negative sixteen or negative that will become positive two i or negative two i negative third uh, sixty four square root that will become positive eight i or negative eight i. Okay? There's always two imaginary number, okay? When we solve for it in 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 homogeneous equation, okay? So a plus b i if we write that in our general solution that will become c1 e raised to a x okay e raised to a x for the a1 okay for the eighth term then cosine b x okay for positive b i okay for the negative b i that will become c2 e raised to a x sine b x okay that is for the negative bi and that is a formula okay so in this case okay in this case okay because we don't have an a that our positive i basically that's zero plus i and zero minus i right our general solution will become c1 a raised to negative 2x for the negative 2 term for the positive i, that will become c2 e raised to 0x cosine x plus c3 e raised to 0x for our negative i sine x, okay? 
So that will become c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 cosine x plus c3 sine x. Okay? That is now our general solution. Okay? So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna find uh, another example because this will become super fast video. I'm, I'm gonna find an example in my book. Okay? So let's say we have an uh, example of uh, uh, okay. y double prime okay. minus minus uh, 4y minus 4 y prime plus 13y right plus 13y is equal to 0 okay okay so that's not factorable okay so that's not factorable okay anyways let's do the usual preparations okay negative 4 dy plus 13y is equal to 0 separate y d square minus 40 plus 13 is equal to 0 uh, uh, polynomial d square minus 4d plus 13 let m be the roots of the equation equation so m squared minus 4m plus 13 Okay, that's not factorable. So, we're going to use our quadratic equation. M1, M2 is equal to negative B square plus or minus square root of B square. Ah, that's not B square. That's just negative B. Minus 4AC over 2A. Negative positive 4 plus or minus square root of negative 4 is 16 minus 4 times 13, right? over 2 1 positive 4 plus or minus 16 minus 54 52 okay over 2 that will become positive 4 plus or minus square root of negative 36 okay negative 36 over 2 okay and our roots will become positive 4 positive or negative 6i over 2 2 plus or minus 3i okay so our first root m1 is 2 plus 3i our second root is 2 minus 3i okay and our that will be uh, that's a good example so because we have a value of a so our general solution now will be y is equal to c1 e raised to 2x for the value of a is 2 cosine 3x plus c2 e raised to 2x sine 3x for the negative 3i and that is now our general solution i hope you guys have learned i right, let's proceed to our last example Whew, i think how many uh, uh i'm thinking about how many minutes is all of the three videos and I really hope that my students are watching or like learning from this video or yeah probably you know uh, they're, they're trying to learn and that's enough for me but you know what's much better if they're re really learning and and uh, my video is making a difference right so D, y, D to the fourth Y I just like direct directly just went for it D squared Y plus 81 Y is equal to 0 Ooh, what is this? It looks like are you guys seeing things? Are you guys like it looks like a perfect quadratic or or quad or pet tetric function of t d to the fourth plus 18 d squared plus 81 uh, let m be the roots of the equation okay 
So that's m to the fourth plus 18m squared plus 81. Okay. Huh. Is it this like m squared plus 9? 0 squared? So is this an example of a repeating roots? Okay. m squared plus 9 squared. The root will become m is equal to negative 9 square root m is equal to positive or negative 3i but because that squared we have m1 is 3i positive 3i m2 is negative 3i m3 is positive 3i m4 is negative 3i we have a repeating roots and imaginary oh my god blown away wow it's rare okay, anyways all right so if we have repeating roots and imaginary just simply join the two okay for the first imaginary so c1 cosine 3x plus c2 sine 3x for our second or repeated 3i and negative 3i thus become c3 x because it's a repeating cosine 3x then c2 x sine 3x okay and that is now our general solution to our differential equation higher order homogeneous okay so that's a very uh learning uh Oh, how, how about let's wait, 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 no, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, okay? Can we do that in the calculator? I think some calculators don't even get the roots, okay? Especially if that's ship solve. X squared plus 9 is equal to 0. Okay, can solve, okay? You cannot ship solve for the roots. I think. Can you like do a uh, mode 5, let's say 3, uh, 1, 0, 9? You can equation, mode equation. You can mode equation 4. Mode equation for your roots. Okay. But you cannot ship solve for your imaginary roots, okay? So, that's one of the limits of a calculator. Again, guys, it's about the students, not uh, the calculator, okay? Don't ever rely on your calculator. Although engineers would likely, you know, ah, how dare you? I love my calculator. No. Anyways. Thank you, so, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys learned. And it's getting cold. And bye-bye. See you guys for the next episode. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.